Hi everyone, I'm DJ Philip Tan, and I use Pioneer DJ's Record Box software for all of my DJing. Um, recently, I upgraded from a Pioneer DJM S9 mixer to a DJM S11 mixer because it's compatible with Record Box. Now, uh, the DJM S11 mixer was really designed to work with another piece of software, Serato, and it really does work out of the box with Serato really, really well. But it is compatible with Pioneer DJ's own Record Box software. Only some things about it do take a couple of tweaks, and once you've made those tweaks, it's a great mixer. So I'm going to walk you through some of those tweaks that you can make. Some of them are necessary, some of them are optional. I'm going to start with the necessary ones. And if you're a DJM S11 uh, user or you're thinking of getting one, this might be handy for you. The first thing that you've got to do if you're coming from an earlier Pioneer mixer like the DJM S9 is you're going to need to increase your buffer size. So just open up Rekordbox Preferences and go to Audio. Under metronome, audio, sample rate, you'll see buffer size. And when I was on the DJM S9 mixer, I actually got really, really good results with a buffer size of 3.3 milliseconds. So it's short enough, very good for scratching. The DJM S11 mixer, however, isn't just a two-channel mixer like the DJM S9. It's actually a four-channel mixer. It has two additional stereo channels going in and out of the mixer. So that's already more data that it needs to push. Plus, it has a screen, and your computer's got to like send all of that waveform data from the hard drive over to uh, your mixer. So you're going to need to increase that buffer size. Um, what I found, um, I get pretty good results about 8.7 milliseconds, which is a little more than two and a half times the original setting, and it does change the way how certain scratches feel. Still pretty short and workable, uh, but something to keep in mind. So the other thing about Rekordbox is that every time you boot it up, the recording level is always going to default to 12 o'clock, as you can see on my screen right now. Um, and if I were to play a track, I'm going to play one of my own tracks. Here it is playing at full volume. You notice I'm only using about half of the meter. And if you look at the LED uh, volume levels on my mixer right down at the bottom, yeah, you know, that's about right. It's only going about halfway. This is actually how I like to have all of my music though, because that's at unity, that's at zero decibels. I'm not pushing it into the headroom. And that gives me additional headroom when I'm, say, speaking on the microphone. So, if this is the volume where I want my music, I want to be recording it so that I'm using that full bandwidth of the WAV file that's going to be saved to my hard drive at the end of my session. Um, of course, I could always just adjust the record levels by moving this, uh, this fader on screen, but that's always going to go back to 12 o'clock every time I restart record box. So to change that, it's actually pretty easy. You just go to the Preferences again and click Setting Utility, which brings up the DJM S11 Setting Utility. Minus 19 USB output level is what gives you the most headroom and is what uh, the driver uh, is configured to use by default. But in my case, I can click that and I set it to minus 10 and the saved WAV file that I get at the end of my recording sessions seem to have much better use of the available dynamic range. Um, loud parts of the music uh, take up a lot of space on the waveform, but they don't clip, so that's perfect. And that means I have a lot of resolution for the quieter parts of my music. Um, and that all happens with my recording levels set to 12 o'clock. So I don't have to change my recording levels every time I restart Rekordbox. Now on Serato, the DJM S11 actually has two possible behaviors when you hit the loop button. Uh, the two modes that you can set in your preferences. In one mode, you select how long you want your loop to be, two bars, four bars, one sixteenth, or whatever it is. You hit the auto loop and it will f just, and, and, and your loop will be that length. So for instance, if I wanted a 32 beat loop, I've now got a 32 beat loop. And of course I can change it. Say I change it down to a half bar, two beat loop. And if I were to turn on the loop again, it still 
get a two beat loop. Now there's an alternative mode, uh, and you you would turn it on by going to the settings on the DJM S11 in performance loop options, and you can turn on the loop option, and this makes Serato's looping function behave more like a Pioneer CDJ, where every time you hit the loop button, it always gives you a four-beat loop. Um, now you can configure that, you know, to default to an eight-beat loop or a sixteen-beat loop, whatever you want. But every time you hit the button, no matter what you had done in the past, it will always give you that set number. In this case, a four-beat loop, and you can also have those options in uh, in, in record box. Uh, however, if you have your loop option on in the mixer, Rekordbox behaves a little bit unpredictably. And let me show you what it means, uh, what it looks like. All right, so right now I've got the music playing and I want to set it to a two beat loop. I'm gonna hit loop. I got four beats instead. That's correct because you know I because the loop option said no always default to a four beat loop every time I hit the loop button. That's great. And now I'm going to change the loop. And turn it off. The loop doesn't turn off. The loop just goes back to a four beat loop. And you have to hit it one more time to actually turn the loop off. That's a little bit unpredictable. I don't think anybody actually wants the behavior to act like that. So what I suggest is you leave loop option off if you're going to be working with Rekordbox. And instead, you go into Rekordbox Preferences, select Controller, scroll down, and find the Auto Beat Loop option. Here it says loop for specified beats, which means you choose what you, your loop length you want, you hit the loop button and you'll get it. And if you want instead to always have a four beat loop every time you press loop, no matter what you did in the past, that's where you make the change. Again, in the mixer, set your loop options to off. You know, just, just leave it in its default mode. And now, every time I hit the auto loop button, I will always get a four beat loop, no matter what I had it set before. I'm going to set it to something ridiculous, 512 beat loop. I'm going to hit auto. And now I've got a four beat loop. I'm going to change it. The moment I hit the loop button, the loop goes away and my music keeps playing. This is how I expect it to behave. That's probably how you'd expect it to behave as well. Nice thing about Rekordbox is that you can MIDI map buttons that you don't use all that often into something that you actually want to use more often but you don't have a button for. Um, so I'm going to show you how I do that to enable slip mode, uh, which is a function that Rekordbox supports just fine, but in order to activate it when you have a DJM 11, you normally have to just use your mouse and click it on, on the screen. I want it on my mixer. So I'll go to MIDI functions. Now these are all the MIDI mappings that Pioneer is letting me edit. It's not all of the MIDI mappings that are currently in the mixer, but just the ones that Pioneer has exposed and allows me to actually make changes to. Uh, first thing I've got to do is um, I'm going to take that Browse Back option, which is currently assigned to the Back button, and I'm going to assign it to a different button. Uh, so I can still have the Back functionality, just not where, where it, it, it is currently assigned to. I'll hit Learn. And instead of the back button, I'm going to do shift browse knob. In fact, I'm going to do it for both of them, shift browse knob. So now I've replaced the uh, back functionality. The back button now does nothing if I click it. But if I go shift browse, I'll actually go back and I'll still have that functionality. This now allows me to create a mode on the deck uh, panel and call it slip mode. There we go. So in fact, I need two of them, one for the left deck and one for deck two, my right deck. I'll click slip, I'll make sure the learn mode is on, and I'll just press the back button. Now I'll press the back button on the right. And that's it. I'll turn off the learn mode, and now every time I hit the back button on the left, the slip goes on and off. There's one particular part of the mixer that actually sends 
two signals instead of just one signal when you hit shift, and that's the paddles. If I were to go shift paddle down, the paddle actually sends two signals. It always sends the momentary turn on your effects signal that it always does, but it also sends an additional uh, signal that you can use to trigger other things. So for instance, um, in Recordbox, there's actually a pretty powerful sampler feature called the sequencer. And I want to be able to turn that and turn that off without having to reach for my trackpad. So again, I'm going to go into MIDI. This time I'm going to head over to the sampler tab and add sequence record and sequencer start. Now, normally, for any other MIDI function, I just hit learn, and then I will go shift down. However, 9450 is actually the wrong code. 9450 is just turn on your effects. What I want is actually 9466. Similarly, for the right side is 9566, but I'm getting 9550. Now this is a alphanumeric hexadecimal code and the way how you discover what the mixer is putting out every time you do use these buttons, whether you're using the shift key or not, is to use a program like MIDI Monitor and you can see everything that your mixer is telling the computer every time you hit a button. And that's how I discovered that there, that, that paddle actually does two things. Another bunch of buttons that really don't have any pre-assigned function when you hit the shift are your effects select buttons. Obviously, if you just hit it normally, you're switching between different sound effects. But if you hit shift echo or shift backspin, nothing happens at all. And, but it still sends a MIDI signal, so you can take advantage of that. Um, what I actually like to do is uh, map sample scratch, which is Recordbox's version of Serato scratch banks. I can go into Recordbox settings and go to the Pad tab and say Add Sample Scratch Pad 1. So this will be the equivalent of me going Shift Sampler and selecting Pad 1. Um, and I'll show you why this is a neat thing to do. I'm just going to hit Learn, hold on Shift and press the Echo button. In a way, this is making up for a shortcoming of Recordbox's implementation of Sample Scratch. In Serato, you can set that same Scratch sentence into multiple uh, Scratch Bank pads, and each one of those pads can jump to a different hot cue. But in Recordbox, you can't. You can only uh, load up one hot cue or one specific point for each file that, that, that you're loading. If you load it up into multiple banks, it will always go back to that same position. So um, this is a way to get around it, is you just use the regular hot, hot, hot cues, and by going shift echo, I load it up, but I stay in hot cue mode, and it makes it easier for me to jump two different samples in that same scratch sentence. Shift echo. And it's all loaded up and ready to go. Because I'm in hot cue mode, I can quickly switch between different words in this scratch, scratch sentence. Finally, a lot of DJs have asked uh, for a button that will turn on silent cue in the DJM S11. Now, that button actually exists, but it's on the touch screen, and you have to navigate through a menu to do that. You have to go into the menu, touch MIDI, MIDI B, and there is silent cue. All silent cue is doing, as you can see on the screen, is basically muting one of the sides of the, um, the mixer, and it's going to stay muted until you hit hot cue. However, if you go into Recordbox's MIDI settings, there is no option for silent cue. You can't assign the silent cue uh, function to any MIDI button. What you can do, however, is quit Recordbox. And on your hard drive, if you look at you know, your hard drive, users, your user folder, library, application support, Recordbox 6, MIDI mappings, you'll see every single MIDI mapping that Recordbox has stored, and it actually will save these settings every time you quit Recordbox. Now, if you open this up with a text editor, 
like text me over here. You'll see that all of the settings that I've just made are all stored over here. Um, and instead of, say, using the back button to control slip, I can change that to, say, mute. Mute is not an option that you can select from within Rekordbox MIDI ma mapping. So I just save that. I open up Rekordbox again. So now, if I hit back, I immediately turn on mute. I'm in silent queue. I can even put my record on and you're not going to be able to hear anything. My volume's fully up. And if I hit any pad, the uh, music's just going to play from that hot cue. Everything you want from silent queue. Again, silent queue on. Silent queue off. So hopefully, that gives you that silent queue functionality that you might be interested in. I've heard that there are some kinds of other software hacks to be able to put it on the touch screen, but I like how this works. It's this tactile button, and of course, you can also use, you can also assign it to shift paddle, like I showed you how to do it with the sequencer. You just change sequencer rec or sequencer start to mute, and you will get silent queue on your paddles. So I hope you found some of those tips useful. Um, if you do use any of them, or you put your own spin on them, please leave them in the comments below. I'm DJ Philip Tan. Hope you have a great day.